Hey everybody, it's Julie for EllenHudson.com. Welcome to Hello Monday. I thought it would be really fun to make an interactive Valentine. Now this one does fold flat, so you can stick it inside a standard A2 envelope. But look at that fun interaction. When you pull apart the sides, it's giving you a hug. So we're going to be making a simple shadow box card today. And I'm going to start with two five and a half by six and a quarter inch panels. And then I'm grabbed my little mini scoreboard here. I'm going to score at half an inch from that short end and then again at one inch and then I'll rotate it and do the exact same thing half an inch in and then once again at one inch and these folds are going to be uh, recreated on the second panel so that both of them have the exact same score lines and then I'm going to mountain fold that one inch and crease that with my bone folder there give it nice and sharp crease there and then I will flip it over and at the half inch mark I'm going to valley fold and then I'll repeat that on the other side. So we're going to mountain fold, crease that with the bone folder, and then valley fold that half inch line. There we go. And I'm going to repeat that with both of these panels so that they look like this. And one of them is going to become the front of my shadow box. Now I need to put a, an opening there in the center. So I'm just going to flatten that out because I'm going to send it through my die cutting machine. And I've grabbed one of those infinity heart dies from uh, Hero Arts and I'm just going to use some purple tape to make sure it doesn't move when I send it through. And there's my front panel and this is going to be the front uh, window of my shadow box. So there's the back side and when you sandwich the two together that's how they're going to go together just so you can see where I'm heading as I keep going with this. Now to create the hands that are going to hug inside the card, I'm using the hands die set and these are the larger hands and I've staggered them but I just had this scrap of pale rose cardstock and I wanted to have enough clearance because these do not cut along the bottom edge and the reason for that is to give you more flexibility in how long the arms and wrists are. So I'm going to use an X-Acto knife and cut those out and I really wasn't sure how much length I would need so I figure better be safe than sorry. So <laughs> I'm not really going to need them this long but I'm just showing you how you can elongate those cuts to get arms any length that you need. Now I wanted to give some nail polish there to my hands so I grabbed a Copic marker and I think this one is um, light prawn and I'm just coloring the tips there of both of the hands so that it got a nice uh, polish effect on there. My real hands don't look like that. <laughs> My paper hands have a better manicure than I do. So now I'm going to grab some Bellini Catherine Pooler dye ink and a small rubber brayer. I like working with a real rubber brayer and the Speedball is probably one of the best brayers I've ever worked with. And I'm just going to lift and roll, lift and roll in the same direction. So instead of going back and forth, I'm always lifting and rolling when I'm inking up the brayer and when I'm laying down the color. And then I'm going to rub this across my scratch paper here just to take off any residual ink and then I'm going to move to the next deepest color. Now this one is that pretty coral color. I think it's called Cabana Coral. It's a nice kind of a warm pink hue and I'm just going to layer that right over the top. Now I don't care about getting a really nice blended effect. Now you can take the time to do that but I like it this way. Um, so I'm just not going to worry about getting a smooth even blend. But again I am rolling and lifting across the ink pad and rolling and lifting and rolling again across the paper surface. Otherwise, uh, I just end up getting all ink in the same spot on my brayer and the same, uh, I just ink up the same spot there on the paper. So I want a continuous motion. So roll and lift. And then once I clean that off, I also moved to a deeper shader, uh, a shady color of pink, which is um, that wonderful, I think it's called party dress. Yes. And so those colors blended together nicely. And then I am going to grab my arms here and just kind of that's around with where I want those hands to be positioned through the window. So this is what's helping to have that extra length there. Then I'm going to use some tape runner after I got finished futzing <laughs> with where I thought I wanted to put those arms. I'm going to go ahead and use some tape runner. And the reason why I'm using tape runner is that if I need to, I can kind of peel those up and move them around a little bit if I'm not quite sure. So I'm just kind of testing their placement right now. And there I'm going to get the right one anchored in and then I'll work on the left one. They kind of shift, you know, when you're futzing around there. So you need to play with it a little bit. 
So there's no uh, diehard formula there. It's just where they look good and where they appear through that opening. And then I'll add some more tape. And then again, I'm going to test it, make sure that I'm happy with where they fit. And I'm also going to test um, how everything kind of lays out together and looks. And I need to get a sentiment on the front. So I'm going to flatten that out and I'm going to pop it into my Misty platform here because this is a larger one. I'm working with the standard Misty. And then I've grabbed a sentiment from the High Five stamp set and I'm going to position it right there. Now there's a method to my madness. Don't worry that it's going through the opening there. And it looks like the paper shifted a little bit when I was getting that mounted. So I'll just reposition it back into place there. So my magnets were not as strong as the suckiness of that clean stamp. So now I'm gonna take some cellophane tape. You could use washi tape or masking tape, whatever you got. I have cellophane tape handy, so I just grabbed that. And I'm going to mask off, and I just realized that um, I'm off camera here. So I'm gonna pull that back into view and show you how I'm placing this tape. Now, I just want the word hugs. I don't want the word mondo and squishy, although I love using that sentiment. I often say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted the word hugs on this card. So I'm going to ink up and then here's the critical part. See, so I've protected the words Monto and squishy and inked up just the word hugs. But you have to remember to remove the cellophane tape before you stamp onto your project. Ask me how I know. <laughs> You'll end up with a big black blob if you don't remember to remove the tape. So I'm just going to press down on the lid there, and I should have that sentiment exactly where I want it. Yeah, looks good. So now I'm not going to mess around with that anymore. I'm going to go ahead and take these little tiny hearts. In hindsight, I was looking back at it and going, you know, I want a little bit more interest on this. So I'm using Party Dress, which is a nice, uh, pretty pink. It was the color I used at the very bottom there. And because it's the darkest of these three colors, I don't want it to be super dark, but I just wanted to add a little bit of kind of like textural interest here. And my hands are in the way. And as I kind of got to thinking about it, I realized, duh, it would be a lot easier if you flip that arm around to the backside. And I wish I'd thought of this before I mounted the hands. But as it was, it's like, okay, I'm not moving. I'm not going to remove these hands and stamp these hearts. But flipping them towards the back, it's like, well, what do you know, girl, that works. So I'm just going to add a couple more hearts to get them sprinkled and visible through the heart. And that will just give me a little bit more interest on the back there. Okay, so we've got those done. And then I can go ahead and start uh, assembling everything. And I'm going to take some of that tape runner and run that along over the top of the arm and along that uh, half inch flap there. Because this is where these panels are going to get joined. And I learned the hard way. Just secure one side first and then secure the other side so you can get it to lay down nice and flat. So once I'm sure that one's lined up, I'm going to open that up, add a little bit more tape runner there to the other side. And again, I'm just gluing along that half inch flap. And you can see my sloppy braring there on the edges, but it's not going to matter because it's not really going to be seen. So now I can go ahead and smooth that flat and make sure that everything is lined up properly and everything fits nice and flat. Okay, once we have that secure, I can go ahead and take my scissors and I'm just going to trim off the overhang. And you could do this on a paper trimmer, but it's just as easy for me to do it with my scissors. So that's what I'm doing. And once we have those done, I'm going to go ahead and give this a test run to make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. And I do need to crease these and collapse those little fold lines there and reinforce them by kind of pressing very firmly. And this way I can get that card to lay flat and collapse when I put it inside my envelope. But in the meantime, you can check out my hugging action here. When you pull the sides and push them back together, you got a hug. This is so cute. And the best part of all too is that this thing will freestand. So it's a freestanding shadow box. All you have to do is set it up right like that and you're good to go. Hope you enjoyed and you'll give this DIY interactive shadow box a try. Thanks for watching.